I know I'm not the target audience for Mickey Mouse Funhouse, but I just can't resist. As a Disney fanatic, if you like, I'm, I absolutely love Disney, and particularly the classic characters. And I've been watching a lot of 1920s Mickey Mouse shorts at the moment, so I thought it was about time that I checked out some more of the more contemporary approaches, including things like Minnie's Bowtoons and Mickey Mouse Clubhouse. One that I've never seen before is Mickey Mouse Funhouse. So I watched this first episode, which is called Mickey the Brave. I have to say, as a child, I would have absolutely lapped this up. I mean, as an adult, I thoroughly enjoyed it. But as a child, I would have found it to be so fun if there is merchandise related to this. Absolutely, I would have been drawn to it like a magnet. This is kind of similar to Mickey Mouse Clubhouse in a way. Insofar as we have a very similar cast, Mickey, Minnie, Donald, Goofy. And we also have Cuckoo Loca here. Um, Daisy Duck as well, and Pete. And what makes this particularly fun to begin with is the house itself. The house has the most amazing design. I was um, very much into designing wacky, outrageous things as a child, like houses with slides on the side of them, and that's exactly what we get here. This completely feeds into the childlike imagination. The, they, are, they have all of these cars that kind of resembles like a roller coaster, the way they kind of slide towards the house. It's a lot of fun. And with this first episode, at least, they are very curious about dragons. I don't know if this kind of setup is what we can expect from every episode going forward, but with this first episode, they enter a magical realm where everything um, changes. So they're wondering if dragons are good or bad. And this character called Funny, who I assume is um, kind of a stock character in every episode, transforms into this magical kingdom of Majestica, where the house itself looks like a Disney castle, a classic Disney castle. We have a bit of classic Disney music playing. It's, it's, it's magical. It's absolutely beautiful. And the characters themselves are dressed as um, knights and um, princesses. Minnie and, and Daisy. Daisy dressed as a knight, which I thought was pretty cool because they could have very easily put all of the females in this in traditional female outfits. Um, but actually, they went a different route with Daisy and I was really impressed with that. Minnie, of course, is wearing a, prince, a pink princess dress. Of course she is. Um, and they have to kind of navigate throughout this kingdom with swords and shields. Um, you know, it's very medieval in a lot of ways. And they meet this dragon. And this dragon doesn't seem as friendly as they perhaps had expected. But maybe there's a reason for that. And I will talk about that at the end because I don't want to give away what this reason is. But I thoroughly enjoyed it. It's brightly coloured. I like the fact that the characters transform with these different costumes. It's a different environment. I, lo I love the magical element, and I do love the fact that the fun house, who has its own personality, becomes a traditional Disney castle. It was just such a lovely touch. And quite frankly, that may be lost on some young children. Um, they may not be able to, you know, recognise a classic Disney castle quite so young. But obviously for the older audience watching it, it, it's a beautiful little touch. And there's a lot of detail in this. And I thoroughly enjoyed it. I thought it was quite educational compared to things like Mickey Mouse Clubhouse where it's blatantly educational you know teaching children to count and the names of shapes and things or the alphabet this one's not as in your face but obviously there are little facts and, and messages all the way throughout it and then we have the big message and this is the spoiler I am about to say what the dragon um what the dragon's problem was so um a little spoiler but basically the dragon was being a little bit different it turns out he was just misunderstood and it's all about looking at somebody in a different way and i guess dragons are very much um well let's face it shrek is a prime example of that the dragon in shrek is completely misunderstood um she's just angry because she's all chained up uh, as soon as she finds true love, oh, I, suppose that's a st uh, I won't spoil that in case you haven't seen Shrek for some reason. Um, but it's all about somebody being misunderstood and being able to look at them, you know, look through the exterior or look through their behaviour and see who they truly are. And I think that's a really lovely message to give both to young children and, and adults of any age, of course. 
I thoroughly enjoyed this. I was really pleasantly surprised with just how fun it is. Obviously, we have engaging um, songs and, and some great dialogue. And obviously, Mickey is, is brilliant. He is on top form here as usual. Mickey is voiced bre by Brett Iwan, Minnie by Caitlin Robrock. Uh, Tress McNeil as Daisy Duck, Tony Anselmo as Donald, Bill Farmer as Goofy, Jim Cummings as Pete, and Nika Futterman as Cuckoo Loka. These are all voices that also do the voice cast, the voice acting in things like Mickey Mouse Clubhouse and Minnie's Bowtoons. Really, really impressed with the voice acting. I can't mimic voices or do any kind of accent, so when somebody gets a voice that is so close to, for example, Walt Disney's Mickey Mouse or Clarence Nash's Donald Duck. Um, it, I'm always impressed uh, and I, I really am genuinely impressed here. Thoroughly enjoyed this first episode. The big kid in me will continue to watch the episodes that go on. Before I forget, directed by Matthew O'Callaghan and Phil Weinstein. Really enjoyed it. If you're a fan of Disney, even if you're not the target audience, check it out. I, th I think you'll have a bit of fun with it.